all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to this channel i'm dr sam and today we are going to discuss about a few practice questions on oral medicine and radiology so let's get started so here we have a picture a panoramic radiograph of a 50 year old african-american female who presented for routine dental examination there are no symptoms associated with the bony lesions and no enlargement of the mandible. What is the diagnosis of the bone changes in this patient? As you can see, all the bony changes are here, are very fuzzy. It's all over here, here, you know, it's generalized. Now, usually odontomas would look very well defined okay ameloblastomas will be multilocular and cystic and then there will be enlargement of the mandible now there is no enlargement of the mandible noted in this patient and i don't see any cysts you see this hole here this is somewhere you know around the middle for amen but i don't see any cystic area so this is definitely not ameloblastoma this is not odontoma and in osteosarcoma that will also have enlargement of the bone most often so this is not this so the only answer we are left with is florid cemento osseous dysplasia florid is because it's generalized all around in the mandible okay let's go to the next question now this patient is a 35 year old woman the radiograph is from a full mouth series taken at an initial evaluation which diagnosis that could be appropriately included in your differential diagnosis of the lesion at the apex of number 19 except now this is a posterior tooth number 19 it could be a periapical granuloma yes so this can be included it could be a periapical abscess yes it could be a radicular cyst or periapical cyst yes it does look similar it could be a focal cemento osseous dysplasia yes the focal ones are usually in the posterior areas and it could be an apical scar yes it could be a langerhans cell disease or eosinophilic granuloma if it's a grant don't even think about all of the whole name just if it's a granuloma yes this could be a granuloma could it be an early cementoblastoma? Yes, in the initial stages where the calcification has not yet occurred inside. Yes, it can be. Can it be a periapical cemento-osseous dysplasia? No. So this is the only one which cannot be included in the differential. This question is about differential diagnosis. So the answer of this question is periapical cemento-osseous dysplasia this cannot be included periapical cement osseous dysplasia is usually in the anterior areas lower front teeth whereas focal cement osseous dysplasia is usually in the posterior areas so very important remember that this is usually in the posterior and this is in the anterior let's go to the next one now this patient is a 55 year old woman. This asymptomatic radiolucency in the body of the mandible was seen on a routine panoramic radiograph taken at the patient's initial evaluation. This. She had never had a panoramic radiograph before so there was no duration history. What is the most likely diagnosis of this radiolucency and how would you confirm your diagnosis? Select all that apply it's again select all that apply most likely diagnosis of a radiolucency remember they always say most likely diagnosis of a radiolucency because even if there is anything seen on the radiograph you can only give possible answers uh, you can only identify a lesion once you actually see it on a slide histologically okay now what what all do you think would be the possible options? Can it be a static cyst or a staphne bone cyst? Yes, 
that is usually seen under the inferior alveolar nerve chamber nerve canal and that's how you see it as so yes this can be included developmental salivary gland inclusion yes a developmental salivary gland inclusion might also look like that some of the submandibular glands can um, get included in this area and may look like this follow up with patient no change in the radiolucency anticipated it's true most of the time this looks like a staph bone cyst and no change in the radiolucency is anticipated even after follow-up for years and years together because it's not a pathology and in order to confirm this you can also use a cat scan so of course the answer for this question is all the above four uh, options are correct now let's go to the next question the radiographic changes seen in the mandible of the 60 year old man look like multiple round or punched out radiolucencies involving the body angle and the remus of the mandible remember whenever there is multiple then there's a good chance that it is cancerous it's not benign but it's malignant then rounded and punched out this is very very you have to remember this one rounded or punched out radiolucency is always going to be multiple myeloma usually involving the body angle and the remus of the mandible so this was a very easy one you would remember punched out radiolucency is multiple myeloma this patient is a 35 year old caucasian man there is a slight expansion of the mandible in the area of the lesion here the radiographic anomaly abnormality seen in the area of the apex of tooth number 30 is well circumscribed radiopaque and surrounded by a radiolucency in, in the figure this is radiopaque and then surrounded by a radiolucency in close proximity to the tooth root the differential diagnosis will include all except what so when you look at this most often this looks like a cementoblastoma right it could also be a ossifying fibroma a fibroma which is ossifying from the center it could also be a osteoblastoma it could also be a osteoid osteoma but it can never be a multiple myeloma because it doesn't have those punched out lesions so the answer for this is this this question is multiple myeloma because it's a accept question especially in these uh, pathology cases you know always check out what the question is to answer them correctly sometimes they are really simple but if we don't check the question appropriately it can go all the way wrong a young patient presents to your office for the first time you take a baseline panoramic radiograph and note an interesting finding in the right posterior mandible. The patient denies pain and there is no bony presentation. It is well-defined unilocular radiolucency around an impacted tooth and appears to be con connecting to the CEJ. Identify the lesion. Now, most often, this is your hint. They said it's a young patient in which the wisdom tooth has not completely erupted yet okay the other hint is it is connected at the CEJ when you see CEJ connections it is most often dentigeresist don't even think about the other ones because they can be anywhere else but they're not connected to the CEJ so the answer is dentigeresist All right next go to the next question a patient presents with a chief complaint of painless swelling of the right posterior mandible it's painless and there's a swelling of the mandible the panoramic radiographic image shows well-defined multilocular radiolucencies select all that apply that will be included in the differential this is again a differential diagnosis okay now can this be an ameloblastoma yes because in ameloblastoma also you will have swelling of the mandible the, the bone will get extended and the radiolucencies are multilocular and well defined can it be an odontogenic keratocyst yes of course it can be that it can be multilocular can it be a odontogenic myxoma yes it can be an odontogenic myxoma too central giant cell granuloma yes the central one usually happens in this area and it can look like that can it be a central hemangioma yes 
it can be now you do need to remember these in a bulk can it be a neurismal bone cyst yes a neurismal bone cyst also has similar characteristics and what i would do is just remember all of these names together having the same condition same symptoms painless swelling in the mandible posterior mandible most often it's well defined multilocular and radiolucent so the answer is going to be all of them one two three four five six seven let's consider the next question now your patient complains of delayed eruption of the right mandibular molar you take a panoramic radiograph and note an inter interesting finding it shows a well-defined radio opacity with radio lucent rim displacing the impacted mandibular molar it's first of all it's well defined and it's radio opaque and it has a radio lucent rim right and it is displacing the impacted mandibular molar identify the lesion and how is it treated now remember most often when it is a radio opaque thing with a radio lucent rim then it is a complex odontoma okay and the only way to treat this is surgical excision of the entire thing and most often this might need to be either surgically excised or orthodontically moved at the same time depends on how the situation is at the time of the surgical excision of this complex odontoma so the answer is one and so let's see the next question so this is an image of 18 year old female presenting with a chief complaint of missing lower canine there is some bony expansion in the area you wisely decide to take an occlusal radiograph you see a well-defined radiolucent lesion with scattered small radio opacities surrounding the impacted canine so a young female came with an impacted canine now you see that this looks like the canine which is impacted and so you take a occlusal radiograph and you see a well-defined lesion with tiny little radio opacities scattered in there what is the most common radiographic diagnosis now so pyogenic granuloma is basically a tissue lesion now cemento ossifying fibroma is usually found in the posterior areas not in the anterior areas and this is the canine in the anterior areas so this cannot be cemento ossifying fibroma cemento osseous dysplasia usually has a lot of radio obesity not scattered radio obesity so the answer is adenomatoid odontogenic cyst or aot all right so let's go to the next one so a well-defined radio opacity around the mesial root of the mandibular first molar radio opacity remember out of all of these three options sorry all of these four options granuloma apical periodontitis periapical cyst all of those are going to be radiolucent except condensing osteitis so the answer for this when they're asking well-defined radio opacity radio opacity is condensing osteitis and that's it my friend if you have any questions uh, please write down in the comment section below and i will be happy to share all the answers with you adios and take care have a good day